Today again, it will be five questions in 25 minutes. And that means intense reflections, active engagement, and hopefully deep revelations about rhythm, the one thing that connects us all. My guest today originally comes from Aruba, but he lives in the Netherlands. He's a highly regarded percussionist and drum teacher, and he really knows uh, how a tombao should be played, how you make a, cry, a great rabbiniki call. And beside of that, he's also composing great music. Welcome, Michael de Miranda. Welcome to The Power of Rhythm, a podcast with your host, Reinhard Flatischler, around the one thing that connects us all. Rhythm. Thank you for this <laughs> great introduction. <laughs> I'm honored to be here on your show and uh, well. <laughs> so let's get right to it. Uh, first question. What was your first direct experience of rhythm? Oh, my first. Well, <sighs> Here That's a long time ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think it's, uh, I was a child. And actually, when I grew up, um, I think my father brought me in contact with, uh, with rhythm. My mm -hmm. father is from uh, Suriname. And he's actually a musician, a classical guitarist. But um, he, uh, uh, besides classical music, he never forgot his uh, roots. So uh, he's from Suriname, from South America, and he, he played also music from Brazil. And he moved to Aruba and listened to the radio from Cuba. So when I grew up, we listened to those that music too. Ah. And this is actually, as a child, I cannot remember it exactly because... We heard it every day. It was uh, normal for us. And at that time, I thought it was normal for every every family that they would listen to the same music. For later, I found out that <laughs> it wasn't so yeah. like it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you grew up in the Netherlands, right? But you were surrounded, you know, by mostly Latin American rhythms. That's right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I know that you studied in Africa, in Cuba, and in Brazil. Uh, and to play um, traditional rhythms really great. That is an, a nice task. And of course, it honors that tradition. But what's about creating rhythms? What's about improvisation? What's your take on that? Uh, yes, I, okay, I studied a lot of music and I traveled to all those countries to see uh, how they played it and Uh, for me, it's important to know the traditions, but uh, I'm also aware that I'm from the Netherlands. I am not a Cuban percussionist. I'm not from Brazil. I'm not from Africa. So that means that uh, I use uh, rhythms that uh, are played on sabar or bucarabu or congas, or I use uh, the traditions and I try to Uh, to create my own rhythms. So I like to, to, to make uh, combinations from traditions from uh, Brazil and Cuban to play uh, Brazilian music on Cuban instruments or the other way around. And, but uh, um, with respect. Uh, and that's why I think the traditions are for me very important so I can explain why I took this rhythm and combined it with something from another culture and why I think it's a great combination and why it has the same flow and so that's for, that's for me important. I think in this you're very very successful um, I have a proof here um, I want to actually play one song from your album For the Ora it's Ivo, Ivo, where did you record it in Brazil, I guess? And who is the voice? <laughs> well, uh, no, I recorded it in, in the Netherlands oh. with, uh, well, all Dutch uh, musicians. But they, in, in, in the Netherlands, the, the level of uh, music making is, is very high. We have 
very good uh, percussion players and very good. The singer actually is uh, from Brazil. Yes. <laughs> Lillian Vieira. Very she clear is, to hear. <laughs> yeah, she is from, uh, uh, she played in a famous group, uh, Zuko 101. Or one, I don't know the number, but Zuko. And um, she's very good and very, yes, I like to work with her. <laughs> so so <she's> some... <laughs> actually, let's listen to that. Eu vou, eu vou. Eu vou de Varegui pra Goiânia Como se cavalgando em nuvens Pudesse mapear recantos de flamboyãs E de lá enveredar caminhos de Goiás Pelas bandas do Rio Vermelho Pelos doces poemas de Cora Assentando palmos e passos nas congadas Na fé dos romeiros, cavando trindades Buritis alegres, chão goiano de pequis Onde as canções de eles enebriam as noites de lua de nossa terra Eu vou, eu vou, voando eu vou Eu vou, eu vou, voando eu vou Eu vou, eu vou, voando eu vou Eu vou, eu vou, eu vou, eu vou voando eu vou Varegui pra Goiânia Como se cavalgando em nuvens Pudesse mapear recantos de flamboiais E de lá enveredar caminhos de Goiás Pela banda do Rio Vermelho Pelas doces poemas de Cora Assentando palmos e passos nas congadas Nas pés dos joleiros Travando trindades Buritos alegres, chamboiando de pequins Onde as canções de eles enebriam as noites de lua de nossa terra Eu vou, eu vou, voando eu vou Eu vou, eu vou, voando eu vou Eu vou, eu vou, voando eu vou Eu vou, eu vou, voando eu vou, eu vou, eu vou, voando, eu vou. Céus, num tropéu de cavalos voadores Buscando saudades esquecidas No chão central do meu Brasil Do meu Brasil, do meu Brasil Eu vou, eu vou Voando eu vou 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 Ai And I'm living That is from the album Fora de Ora from Michael de Miranda that we have today as a guest here. And you see, when we are listening to music, um, we have this joy that attracts us to it that is groove. You know, we are coming into groove. Now, my question is, if you were to explain or um, kind of offer to someone who is not in music at all, what this person is missing. De de describe how is it to be in groove to this person? 
<laughs> well, that's difficult. <laughs> no, uh, what I can, you know, I gave, um, the, the, very often I gave workshops for companies and very often there are people that uh, when I get to take the drums out, they, they come to me and they say, I don't have any feeling for rhythm. I have never done something. Blah, 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 blah. And they are always afraid. And then after just uh, one hour, they are completely in the groove and they are enjoying and having this positive uh, energy. But uh, most of the time, what I try to explain is that uh, rhythm is everywhere. Everybody has rhythm. You have your heart. It's the rhythm of your heart is uh, is a base. Is is actually a kind of basic groove. Uh, unless you are doing sports, it's going <laughs> up <laughs> tempo. Yeah. But uh, I would try when I would try to to inspire somebody. I would um, talk about uh, the feeling of energy that is released. There is a person who does not know how orgasm feels. You know, you, you can explain, oh, then you do this, and then finally that comes, but no one will know what it is. You say, oh, everything dissolves into timelessness, or, you know, just try to do that. What is groove for you? Describe groove very shortly, please. Uh, groove. <laughs> <laughs> groove for me is is life. <laughs> okay. groove, is, uh, groove is everywhere. Groove is... Um, uh, breathing groove uh, groove is uh, the waves pounding on the beach each time every time repeating and so it's uh, actually a basic uh, part of life yes and me. here comes the one thousand dollar question of a million dollar <laughs> question which is how does groove feel like what's the feeling <laughs> Well, the feeling, well, it's, I think it's difficult to describe, but it is uh, like uh, melting together with, uh, in, in, a, in a warm bath. <laughs> or <Okay. laughs> it's warm, it's uh, intense, and, um, and it can be overwhelming mm -hmm. uh, rhythm. And, uh, but, but yeah, still, I think it's difficult to put in words. What no, you did it. Sa thank you, Mikey, for going with me because, you know, it's really like you said it is like a warm pass. I, everyone can kind of relate to that. And this is your personal experience because we're together to get to know what you have to say. You know, that's why we're here. <laughs> yes. And so here comes the next question. Five minutes before you go on stage before you start a recording or before you start a workshop. Guide us into this landscape. Are you nervous? Are you calm? Do you meditate? Do you, what, what do you do? Uh, I actually, I relax most of the time. And uh, most of the time I'm already preparing in my head what the next thing is coming. If it's a performance or a workshop, it doesn't matter. And, and actually, just before, uh, in the minutes before I go onto stage, or then most of the time it sounds straight, strange, but I'm always rubbing my hands. And people always think, oh, Michael, are, are you cold? Or is no, it's for me building up uh, attention. And I can do this in, in seconds. So when I start doing this, then there's uh, adrenaline is coming to what I have to do. And this is actually, so actually in 10 minutes before I'm relaxed and just preparing. And then just before, before I go onto the stage, I give myself energy just by rubbing my hand. And then I'm there in the, in the moment. <laughs> Great. So here to our listeners, you know, many of them also might be musicians and there are many different ways to prepare yourself. Yeah. Try it out, you know, getting the energy going and, uh, you know, get ready for the intensity of what's coming up. It's yeah, great. building up a kind of tension and that all my muscle, muscles and every, my complete body is then prepared for the thing I'm going to do. 
Now, you have really built up a very huge online learning platform. You can almost find everything from the Tumba out of the Happy Nikki call to how the summer should be played. When did you start this project? I mean, online. Now everyone is online in Corona now, you know, but you must have started very early. So how did you start? What made you uh, go there? Because that's important for many people now. They say, yeah. well, what do I do? Uh, I started in 2010. So more than 10 years ago, I started. And actually, I didn't start to to it was not my goal to give uh, lessons but i wanted to learn a, a software program how to edit videos and i was working with green screen i thought this this is nice i want to know how it works so then i thought when when you want to learn something you have to do this uh, uh, as much as possible and then i thought well what is something that is easy for me and for me it is easy to teach. Uh, and at that moment, there were not that many uh, lessons or good quality uh, percussion lessons on YouTube. There were good percussionists already, but very often the audio quality was not good or the, the, the video, it was not. So then I thought, well, let's start explaining a rhythm with green screen and then I can make my own background and, and explaining for me is, is easy. So I started and my first videos, they have strange backgrounds and I make do funny things. It, but uh, actually, and I thought because uh, I was a little bit, um, I'm never up front, you know, I, uh, so I thought, let's, I start with a rhythm that is not that well known, not that popular. So I started with a rhythm called Makuta, Toque de Makuta. Mm -hmm. It's from Cuba, uh, but from Cuba, most of the time it's about rumba, about cha-cha-cha, but Makuta, nobody knows. So I thought, let's do something that nobody will look at. But uh, I posted it and immediately I got reactions from the United States from this. And do you know this? And we'll, and then after five uh, lessons, I stopped with the green screen thing. And, uh, and then I thought, okay, because it's a lot of work. And then I started uh, to, to uh, answer the questions that I got and uh, started to, to produce more lessons. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the way I started. <laughs> Great. And for that, uh, you obviously uh, went to Cuba, Africa, Brazil. I've been in Cuba, actually, in the carnival in 76. Okay. <laughs> that was okay. completely closed. And you, it was only a music group from San Francisco that I played in. It could go in at this time, you know. So uh, when have you been in Cuba? What did you see in Cuba? Whom did you visit? You know, <laughs> Metanza. So where have you been? <laughs> well, the first time I went, I, I went to, to Havana and I studied with uh, a teacher that uh, in the 80s came to, to the Netherlands to teach at the conservatory. And so I visited him and I wanted to know more about the folkloric uh, part of Cuba. But I uh, also went to Matanzas because mm. the room, I, I love the rhythms from Matanzas. Mm. And uh, I studied with uh, Roberta Vizcaino and he uh, uh, he's a great percussionist and he played modern, uh, actually modern percussion and, 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 everything together playing timbales here with his right hand left hand congas and a little bit this and blah 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 and i was completely uh <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and just for just for our listeners you know uh, metanzas is really the capital of rumba you know if the yeah. moniquitos the metanzas and all of that yeah. but of course and santiago de cuba is very big in the carnival because it's the old yeah. carnival right yeah. so um you have been learning in Africa, Cuba, and Brazil. Tell yes. us the commonalities or what do they have in common and what is their difference? Like also from your learning experience, how was your learning experience in these three locations? Yeah. Well, the, the thing that is in common is that the rhythms are built up in 
all kind of small parts. You know, the bell is playing this small part. Uh, one drum, uh, a sabara is playing this small part. Then a bass drum is this. And all those parts, they come together. And it's, uh, when they are put together in the right way, it's like a wheel which is turning and it's going. Then you have the right flow. And this is in Brazil. This is in, in Cuba. This is in Africa. It's everywhere the same. The small parts that fit together. And another thing which they have in common is how the beat is uh, subdivided, the timing of, of rhythms. So it's not like um, house music, music that every uh, small notes are have the same length, the same, but the flow, the it's in samba, it is in rumba, it's uh, in Africa, in rhythms so this is also something and but uh differences are that uh, for instance the difference between uh, africa and and uh latin american is that that how the the european instruments are used for instance uh the piano let's take the piano when uh the the, the africans in cuba they when they could play on the piano, they played it like a rhythm instrument. So they, uh, and the way they play uh, the chords, they break down the chords and they make it like a timbales rhythm. And that's different than, the, uh, uh, in Africa, you don't see this. They don't do this. This is a, uh, or the way the piano or guitar is used in in in, in Brazil, uh, they play also rhythms like on, on the small tambourine, uh, the tam tam tagan kenking. This is not the way they play in 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 Africa. So it's uh, not only uh, uh, the new instruments that came there by the Europeans, but it's also that new instruments were developed. The Africans that went to Latin America, they couldn't bring their instruments. Of course, you will see now gen bass in, in Brazil, and of, of course. But uh, at that time, they had to create uh, their own instruments. So, for instance, congas is an instrument from Cuba. It's not from Africa. And it's developed from uh, instruments that were brought by the people from Congo and uh, Angola. And they, they had similar instruments, but they couldn't bring. So they created their own instruments. A clav, a clav is not from Africa. It's, it, they don't actually know how, but the, the one thing they, they say is that the, the ships that where the, the ropes were connected with wooden pins, and they connect, they put the ropes and these wooden pins. This is how in Havana, in the harbor uh, and in Matanzas, they created this instrument. So yeah. sounds and uh, lots it's of different sounds. A, and it's the same with a berimbau. You know, there's a lot of bows, like music bows in Africa, but the berimbau just is from Salvador Bahia in its, in its form. Yeah, but exactly. thank you. This is a very, very clear and comprehensive, you know, description of this. Uh, this yeah. re, uh, learning a methods where you have been. Now, yeah. uh, last question, Michael. Uh, if you had unlimited resources, or almost unlimited resources, uh, and you could do your favorite project uh, once everything opens up again, what would this be? Um, I think it would be bringing musicians uh, together and um, offer them uh, a place uh, and the possibilities to, to create uh, music, uh, new music or to experiment. I like, I like it when uh, people, musicians come together and they experiment and not everything will be a success, but giving this platform where they uh, can meet and, and, and exchange uh, knowledge and uh, music. I think it would be something like this and not to, 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 to make uh, something commercial, but to, to see what happens when people meet each other and they, they, they know their instruments, their history, their hub, and they bring it, but they are drawn a little bit out of their comfort zone and then something new will 
be created. That I think something like this would be the thing that I would create. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, that sounds really wonderful. And we are actually praying that you and the universe will kind of come together and it will provide this founding for you. Yes, yeah, great. People can come together and, you know, encounter through rhythm. Yeah. Michael, thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for your knowledge. Now let our listeners know where they can find you uh, on the net, please. Uh, well, you can find me on YouTube, just my name, or on uh, Patreon or uh, on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram, but uh, just when you uh, fill out my name, uh, you will find me. And, uh, and I want to thank you for the invitation, and uh, I'm honored to be here in your show. It's Absolutely. <laughs> a big pleasure. And to our listeners, please check Mike out. He has a lot of great stuff. Uh, whenever you are, you know, playing a drama, you don't know how to do this correctly, look it up. It's a lot of really hands-on uh, advice, hands-on knowledge. With that, if you like our podcast, please go to powerofrhythm.com forward slash podcast, leave a comment, tell me whom you want to hear next. And for now, have a great day and keep on grooving. Mm -hmm.